Hello everybody and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. Gebekli Tepe is the flagship archaeological site of Turkey, the incredible pre-pottery Neolithic complex with origins dating back to at least 11,500 years ago. Designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 2018, experts estimate that only 5% of this enormous complex have been excavated. Within that 5%, we have already learned so much and the discoveries have effectively rewritten the history books. We have enormous T-shaped pillars, some of which are anthropomorphic and some intricately carved with beautiful reliefs, engravings and three-dimensional portrayals of animals, patterns and other iconography from the remote past. We have important circular enclosures and smaller ones that are later and rectangular. There are domestic artefacts like grinding stones, handstones and limestone cooking bowls. We find examples of flint, obsidian and basalt tools and weapons. There are ceremonial objects, animal bones and human remains. The site was purposefully buried sometime around 10,000 years ago and didn't see the light of day until 1995. We have all seen these pictures of the circular enclosures and the T-shaped pillars. We have all heard theories, hypotheses and ideas concerning the form and function of the pillars and enclosures. But at this stage, with only an estimated 5% of the site excavated, all these ideas will ultimately develop, change or be thrown out. Every new discovery gives us a new piece of information, sometimes critical, regarding how we view the people of ancient Anatolia in pre-pottery Neolithic times. We have already learned so much since excavations first began 26 years ago. But what is left to excavate at Gobekli Tepe? How do we know only 5% of this archaeological complex has been excavated? Well, some of you will be aware, but I don't think the images are widely circulated, that geophysical surveys of Gebekli Tepe have been done in the years 2003, 2006, 2007 and 2012, and the results have helped archaeologists to understand the extent of the site and the monuments yet to be excavated. As stated, the circular enclosures and magnificent T-shaped pillars are the widely known features of Gebekli Tepe. But since the earliest excavations, one of the pressing questions was whether or not these enclosures were restricted to a certain part of the hill, aka there was a specific region for a special type of building, or whether they existed all over. In 2003, large parts of the hill were subjected to extensive magnetic prospection and then later areas were further studied with georadar and geoelectric tomography. The late great Klaus Schmidt, who was lead archaeologist at the site, published a field report the same year and said, and I quote, More than 10 large enclosures could be located in the geomagnetic map, and some more can be expected. As four large enclosures are under excavation, enclosures A to D, in total a minimum of 20 enclosures seem to exist inside the mound of Gobekli Tepe. At every enclosure, a number of megalithic pillars can be expected. So, in total, more than 200 pillars can be calculated. And that really is something to be excited about. In the years 2006, 2007 and 2012, the subsequent surveys confirmed the predictions by Schmidt. It was clear that the monumental circular or oval enclosures were not restricted to a specific part of the hill, but they were in fact all over it. Here is a map of Gebekli Tepe excavations and surveys by ground penetrating radar. The first circular enclosures that were discovered, the ones we all know about, are located in the bottom right hand corner of this image, but much of the area to the north and northwest is still yet to be excavated. So, nearly 10 years after the last geophysical survey, why haven't these enclosures been explored? Well, this is important work for the history of human civilization. Progress is slow because archaeologists have to be methodical and meticulous in their approach. 
but the geophysical surveys did provide the experts with a useful tool to plan field research strategies, and so they don't have to work blindly. They know where to focus their efforts in the future, and, generally speaking, they do know what to expect. From 2007, excavations did spread to the Northwest Hollow, and this was based on the geophysical results. This is a place where GeoRadar showed a large cloverleaf-shaped accumulation, which looked to be several circular enclosures. Early excavations revealed the discovery of Enclosure H, and even today, as far as I'm aware, a cover has been added over the site, and fieldwork is ongoing as archaeologists remove the soil and rubble layer by layer, and also extend the site outwards. Here we can see the georadar results for the Northwest Hollow, and now superimposed over it are the early excavations. As you can see, the geophysics is accurate. Therefore, by looking at this diagram, we do know there is a lot more to find at Gebekli Tepe. In November 2021, it was announced that a Japanese research team is joining archaeologists at Gebekli Tepe and also at Karahan Tepe to use the very latest technology in geophysical exploration as they plan to determine when and how the structures were built at both megalithic sites. They are also going to determine the full extent of the sites in greater detail. The Japanese team from the University of Tokyo and other institutes will use sensitive magnetism and radar technology to explore the fundamental question of how civilization started in ancient Anatolia. This is how many of us see Gebekli Tepe, but this is the archaeological complex in all its glory, and in years to come the entire site will be excavated. There will be new discoveries, there will be new decorated pillars and fantastic stone objects uncovered, and the more work that's done, the more we will understand the origins of civilization. So far we've only scratched the surface. Right across the 12 Tastapella sites of Turkey, work is continuing in what is a huge international effort. The amount of land to excavate documents and protect is truly enormous, and the significance of pre-pottery Neolithic Turkey should not be underestimated or overlooked. For the next few years it's all eyes on Tastapella, because there is so much more to come. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.